Hello everyone and welcome to Dark Kings TV, your home for everything entertainment. Before you do any other thing, subscribe to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Also, hit the notification bell that is behind the subscribe button that is the red bell button you can see. That is going to notify you of our fresh updates. To continue to be a part of this community, please engage with our content by dropping a comment or two. Like and share everything you see from our end. We will be glad you do so. Forbes, Africa's most successful woman and the chief executive officer of Ebony Lives TV, Mosumola Abudu, has been alleged to be the side chick of Governor Sonwolu Babajide of Lagos State. Also, it's been revealed that over the course of the years and the growth of her career and fame, success even, Mo Abudu, as she's fondly called, has been involved in a lot of secret sagas involving top politicians in the country. According to a popular blog on social media, the owner of this blog who has a reputation of bringing every scandalous moment that has been tried to be swept under the carpet to the surface has alleged a lot of things concerning Moabudu and it is currently trending in Nigeria. According to this blogger, he said Mo has a long history with Lagos State governors starting from the days of Ashiwaju Bola Tenumbu. She was Tinubu's mistress for years and benefited immensely from the affair as he lavished, lavished her with expensive gifts and lots of money. But shocking though, because as soon as Tinubu left office, she moved over to Fashola. And that her affair with Fashola was so pronounced, it was one of the many unspoken sins of Fashola that almost cost him his position as governor of Lagos State. Tinubu felt so betrayed and violated that Fashola would get into a romantic relationship with his woman. All of these men are married, by the way. And that affair was the reason why Moabudu's previous studio in Lagos was set ablaze. The people who did this were believed to be Tinubu's boys. When Ambode became governor, though, she made the same move as usual, but he was smart enough to run for his life. He was mindful of the fact that it was the same romance she had with Fashola that landed him in hot water. But now she has Son Wolu in her palms and he's been lavishing resources on her. Once he gets governor, Wa Bawa, literal translation, our governor has been gotten. Neighbors come to her aid. First of all, she says, Moabudu is very indebted. Her debt portfolio is the main reason she is with Somolu. She needs him to help her out as her creditors are breathing down on her neck. Somolu is definitely not exposed to women like Moabudu, so he's treating her like a queen. In fact, her friends are claiming that this will be her most rewarding relationship with a politician till date. She said Mo has a passion for netting some of the biggest names within the Nigerian social, political, and economic space. From Tinobu to Fashola, Boambody avoided her like a plague because he knew what Fashola went through in the hands of the godfather of Lagos politics. Her affairs with the former FIRS boss, Tunde Fowler, is still a reference point within the Lagos social circle. But it was a relationship with the former MD of First Bank, BC Onosoya, that remains unforgettable in social memory. BC fell in love, quote and unquote, with her, and before anybody could see anything, he signed up a very huge unsecured loan for her. Unfortunately, Mo, in her own manners, did not do what she was supposed to do. She was up to no good. As soon as he approved it, he took the monies and never ever serviced the loan. That loan got Mr. Onosoya in hot trouble with First Bank as it was over a billion. In the end, it seriously affected his years of unblemished banking career and the story was very sad. She even alleged that Mo Abudu's bestie or former bestie, Yemisi Wanda, who is the ex-wife of top politician Femi Fani Kayode, who is as now remarried to a northerner, that Mo Abudu slept with FFK chief Femi Fani Kayode and Yemisi was outraged as she was shocked and very broken. She wasn't bothered so as long as she could get whatever she wanted. Yemisi Wada was supposed to handle a contract for Lagos State but Mo took advantage of a relationship with Fashola to repackage that same proposal and Fashola immediately approved it. However, 
the shelter project, which was for provision of shelter for less privileged, was not done by Moabudu. Fashola was helpless because he was sleeping with her. So Yemisi Wada dragged her to EFCC. Yemisi got her locked up for days before she could secure administrative blame. By the time she came out, she the story already broke of how she took the money meant for charity all over Lagos State. She felt very disgraced and ridiculed by Yemisi Wada that she decided that that she now decided to sue her ex bestie for defamation of character. The case was in court for several years, but in 2019, the judge threw out the case on the grounds that Mo Abudu had no merit. Jamie Siwadas at that time posted a victory on social media, and a lot of media outlets took up the story and absorbed the L out and abused the L out of Mo. Mo Abudu, however, has been in this business for too long and she needs to be stopped because she can't keep collecting money from people and leave. Even it has been alleged that her building, the Ebony Life place that she launched in 2019, is courtesy of her longtime lover, Rotimi Amechi, who is a former governor and also a minister currently. Amechi is known for his crazy generosity to his lovers, both male and female. So it wasn't a surprise that he sponsored that place for her. She also dated the billionaire Rose Royce Freak, who lives in Banana Island. But the most scandalous of all her relationship is the affair with her in-law, Mr. Makodrola of Caverton Group of Companies. Mr. Makodrola is her daughter's father-in-law, who presides over a multi-million, multi-business, multi-billion business conglomerate. That affair was so toxic that it shook Lagos to its very foundation. Members of the Lagos High Society were whispering it loudly that more Abudus will be somewhere lose down for and are drawing inference from the toxic relationship that Fashola had with an iconic Yoruba actress, Bookie Wright, which almost marred his entire political affair. The affair between Bookie Wright and Fashola became the biggest and worst black blackmail story in Nigerian society. If someone is not careful, he will find himself in a much worse place. Imagine dragging the state governor to two parties in a space of days. This second, now she posted a picture of Governor Sawolu gracing Mo Abudu's 57th birthday celebration that held recently, and also the Sawolu was at the dinner event that she hosted in order to celebrate Nigerian author Chimamanda Adeche. Now she alleged that. It is because someone who is dating Moabudu that it would be available for such social events. She even said that she was in a sizzling romance with former Governor Mimiko of Ondo State, and that was how she got Mimiko out of Ondo State. It was Mimiko who took her to the then president Jonathan for an interview she grant he granted her. Unfortunately for her, though, patience Jonathan was fully involved, and so there was no opportunity to steal out time with the president's with the president at that time. Now, to even corroborate this story, another person has come out to say it is true that a lot of Nigerians are actually very quick to tag people, their mentors or role models, without really finding out who they are or what they do behind closed doors. It is said that Moabudu is still indebted to Access Bank to the tune of hundreds of millions, hence why she's sleeping with Herbert Wigwe, which is the MC of Access Bank. And you might wonder why she ends up being broke, despite all the money she supposedly makes, right? They are saying that fake life won't let her be great. Have you even wondered why there are, she's no more on DSTV? It is because she refused their terms of renegotiation when dollars became unfavorable during COVID. Ogun Soya advised that they renegotiate and get back when things get better. But she refused, thinking they would want to have her by all means. Anyway, those people yanked her off and she started begging every and anyone that mattered to plead with Ogun Soya. Of course, it was too late at that time. And it is even said that she did not only sleep with Okewo, she he made a bet with his friends and then he invited Moabudu to Dubai. He flew in on a private jet from Lagos to Dubai and then she flew in straight from USA after her daughter's wedding. After sleeping with her though, Okewo dropped a thousand and five hundred US dollars and said he had to quickly fly back to Lagos for a meeting and he'll be back by evening. However, he didn't show up and he left her in the hotel to sort out bills. And it was a huge drama among Lagos social cycle. It's very dirty what some of these women will do, and this person says he thinks and hopes a lot, of, a lot of Nigerian girls will look at it. That has anyone stopped to look at her pedigree and what was she doing when she was living in London? Because the thing is, Moabudu actually left London for Nigeria to come and start her own program, Moments with Mo. She used to be in London and even had her education in London. 
This person is saying that she was a waiter in a nightclub when her ex-husband Tokumbo Abudu met her. And that was another issue on its own because the guy left his correct fiancé to marry her. Of course, he must have assumed she can't be cleaned up. Nothing wrong with being a waiter though, as long as it is your job that fetches your source of livelihood. But alas, Omoilele will always be Omoilele. She slept with every and anything she came across. Omoilele means somebody without dignity though. And that she slept with everybody she came across. Now, in fact, Abudu was detained for a few years. Whoa, the mess is very deep. For me, the lesson is just that no one should envy anyone. Do your research before you tag anyone, your mentor or role model. If you're hardworking and not using your body for money, you are doing well. God will crown your efforts. Now, people are saying this cannot be true. Our dear Mo Abudu cannot be this she's been regarded by forbes as the most successful woman to come out of africa in fact she was rated the tw- she was rated as one of the 25 most powerful women in global television by the hollywood reporter she is a nigeria media mogul philanthropist and former human resources management consultant moabudu was born on the 11th of september 1964. remember that i said that she did not school in nigeria yes she attended the ridgeway school mid kent college and west kent college she has a master's degree in human resource management from the university of westminster in london she is a member of the british psychological society with a qualification in occupational and personality to, um, testing in 2014 moabudu was honored with an honorary doctor of human letters from back back babcock university the university of westminster awarded abudu with an honorary doctorate degree in 2018 for her contribution to the broadcasting industry in nigeria although originally from ondo state in southwest of nigeria the eldest of three sisters was born in Amsmith, west london her father was an engineer and a mother was a caterer so people are like this woman with such amazing career growth and journey with such beautiful background you're trying to say this about her in clubhouse there was a meeting set of people coming and saying why is this blogger trying to defame moabudu and it's been alleged that people pay this person to say ill things about people whoever it is that they have beef with so they are saying that probably someone somewhere who is hating on moabudu has paid this particular blog to say these things about moabudu while other nigerians are saying no this cannot be true this is what moabudu is and who moabudu is there's a lot of confusion going on and people are asking what is the truth moabudu however has not said anything about this she started a professional career as a recruitment consultant in 1987 with the atlas recruitment consultancy firm in the uk before she moved to the staff room group in 1990 she returned to Nigeria in 1993 and was head haunted by Arthur Anderson to head the human resource and training for oil giant ExxonMobil. She is the founder of the Vic Lawrence and Associates Limited. She went ahead to create, produce, and present Moments with Mo before she then founded a television station, Ebony Lives TV, and has been producing entertainment content till date. By October 2009, over 200 episodes of Moments with Mo had been recorded and aired. She's even had guests, including celebrities, presidents, Nobel laureates, and the 67th U.S. Secretary of State, had come to grace our occasion. So people are like, this cannot be a Mo Abudu. This cannot be a Mo Abudu. In 2019, when she opened Ebony Life Place, that has been alleged that Roti Miyamichi sponsored. Ebony Life Place has earned Mo Abudu several awards, and she's done a lot of good work. She's released movies like Oloture. She released movies like Fifty. She executive produced movies like that. Well, honestly, I just want to hear from you guys. She because she's been referred to as a lot of things. She's gotten a lot of accolades. She has two children. She used to be married though to Tokumbo Abudu. Like I said, she has a son and a daughter who currently is married and even has a child already. So I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think of the Omo Abudu story? Do you think this is true or that there could be an iota of truth in it? I'll be waiting for you guys in the comment section. Bye.